Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here in the machine shop today. We're going to be running on the clothing, and we're going to be making some tooling for the K&T. What we're going to do is we're going to start making our number 40 machine tapers for the K&T. I want to make two holders, one for this big dude here. Of course, we're not going to pull it out and show you today and an inch and a half holder. Now I have my 4140 uh, hot roll here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up and we're gonna get it running between centers and we're gonna cr create two good centers and a nice true OD on the outside. Got our four jaw in here, love this baby here. And we're gonna take our four inch, we're gonna stick it in the hole here. We wanna create a face and a center drill and then we'll into it and we'll do the other side as well okay and you got, I like my stare it here Looks like we got one one high right there. Okay, we're gonna come out here at the end. Looks like ninety's the mean. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna we're gonna look out for this end right here and this is hot roll here so I mean we're jumping around five or ten and a four job there's 89 89 89 we got a little bit on the high here 95 90 91 92 I think we're going to call that it good. All right, that looks good to go ahead and give a face and a center drill on that end. Okay, here we go. Now we're hanging out here, so we're only taking uh, about 25 or so off of the face there. All we want to do is clean it up, get a nice clean face. Besides the machine noise, the other noise that's in the background is my 32-inch span in the shop here. We've had uh, we've had a couple weeks of uh, near 100% humidity, and uh, so it's been pretty warm and just keeping the air moving. And uh, we can't be in here without it. So anyway, all right, let's put a center drill in there now. Okay, let's do the other end.
about 80 there, about 40 there. Okay. That's good. Okay, there's no need to really make another pass on there because the center of that's going to be the butt in. All right, so this is going to have a 5 8 thread and it's going to have a little nub here. So it's only going to be about that big in diameter. So that's clean enough right there. All right, we pull our piece, put it over on the drill press or on the hydraulic press. And we're going to go ahead and come in here. and set up our center All right, now we're going to skim cut our center so we know that we're 100% true with the running axis there. Well, let's give us some engagement. <laughs> uh. Okay, we're a little less shallow than, uh, or we're more shallow than the last time we cut that center. But that's not bad.
Alrighty. Press it with a file. Get the high pressure lube out of the other room there and swing our compound back around. Let's get our part set up between centers. This is about 17 inches here and we set this somewhere around 18 and then we'll bring that in and it'll be fine. I got some extreme pressure lube here and there's a close up of it. And on the back it actually says uh, recommended uh, applications, lay centers, grinder centers, uh, milling machine centers, screw centers. Uh, all It gives a giant list of uses all right we'll set that up there all right I'll wipe off the lip of the lathe here so I uh, don't slip and disconnect the power in case I fall against the switch and Hello. Hi. What you doing in the mill? <laughs> okay, after you get it in there, you can lightly tension it to where you have just a slight, slight bit of drag, and that's the friction between here. The live center has no drag on it, or not measurable enough. Uh, it, whenever you put pressure against bearings, you do have a certain amount of drag. Um, okay. How am I going to drive it? <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. The dog, my largest dog that I have, where did I put it? All right, <clears throat> I set it over there after I found out that um, three and a quarter or so is the largest that I can go on, so I'm not going to be able to make this four inch. So we'll put that off to the side. And the reason why I put it in here like this is because I'm going to take a piece of angle iron and a couple hose clamps and I'll be able to drive drive the slug with okay there we go hey Don That's running pretty good. Okay, let's set up and we're going to take a skim cut on the OD of that. I'm going to take the crust off the outside here. Okay, a little harmonics there. All right, I sped it up a little bit to see if we can get on the other side of it, but not quite yet. We're still showing off a white chip there. So we're gonna work on it a little bit, see if we can find the sweet spot. All right, I stopped and I went ahead and I reached under my rollaway there and I have some 3 16 thick or 1 8 thick lead. I think it's 1 8. I did have some 3 16 down there, but it seemed to be too hard to bring around here. So I wrapped this around, put a hose clamp on it, and then touched off where I was having that harmonics really kicking butt there. And then I decided to touch in here. Of course, this isn't as deep as this. I wanted to like lightly touch in here. All we need to do is get a nice true smooth cut in here that's true with their centers that's what we're trying to do so we'll go halfway here then we'll flip it around and we'll go halfway there and we'll get a nice true cut in here in the middle so that we have something that we can dial on and then we can grab it really stout in our fore jaw and set up and do the taper ends with a good grip on here and we'll be able to hog off some material because we got a, this is this is a lot of material we're going to be hogging off each end here all right, so let's let it fly. Uh, 450 on the RPM. 
and uh, we're just taking a light cut. We're going to skim across the top of the area that had the harmonics. Looks like we're cutting through them. We don't want to try to take them all at once because it may add some into our cut. Some people add lead, some people add uh, rubber bands. There's a lot of different ways to take singing or harmonics out of, out of your part. Sometimes slowing it down works, sometimes speeding it up, getting past that, that variable that's creating the inconsistency of, of smoothness there. When we catch up to that and it smooths out, we'll be we'll be in Fat City. We'll come back and we'll take a couple more cuts. We'll measure it and we'll look at what we got for a diameter here. We don't have any critical diameters to maintain on the outside. Well, it's taking a little bit. We'll look at that finish when we're done. Also, sometimes just adding a little cutting oil makes it go away. That did a little. You have to search for that just right. There's none right now. Look at what we got here. That's pretty. That's pretty decent, right in there. This was cutting some of it out. All right, we're gonna take a couple light cuts. See if we can we can power through that. Um, we're also gonna look at how they cut. That that cut looks pretty good there. Okay, turning a pretty good chip over here. They're heavy. <laughs> um, I shorten up the tailstock. Move my compound over here. Shorten up the tailstock. I'm still doing the 450. I'm still feeding along a uh, little less on the feed rate, but I'm able to get underneath there, and I got a baby butt surface right here, and. Uh, I think I'm going to be happy with that. We'll be able to into it and duplicate that finish. So you, sometimes you've got to work at getting through your mishaps along the way. Looks like I've done this. Okay, looks like we're ready to touch up on this side here. I'm going to just blend this side into the other side. Okay, we're coming down to... Uh, the nitty gritty right here, another eighth of an inch, and there we go, we're blended right into it. We're about a thousandths heavy, and I faded out.
Okay, let's see because I thought it was it was it was close. I was reading about a thousand more. All right, we got uh, 958. 959 okay we were half a thousand excellent nice blend all right we're ready to pull this out of our centers and uh, kind of regroup clean this up we're gonna be putting one end in here dialing the center and running the other end in the center to set it up for the tracer all right before we get started over here <coughs> and and start actually setting up our mandrel which we have that arbor that we talked about in our earlier videos we have made a sleeve here or a slug and we press fit it right onto the so we can get that flange diameter and then we'll be playing around with the boss that sticks out here which will hold our little end mill and I put a uh, little broach shim over here so that we can get that diameter right there before that relief on the taper and this is ready to go in the lathe but we have a dummy over there and we're going to be dialing it in momentarily and setting up our two centers that hold the mandrel perfectly true in line with the lathe all right we have samples and we have we have plenty of samples we have a lot of tooling for the KT. but you want to know the technical dimensions for the uh, machine tapers. Now, I've always talked about machinery's handbook. I've always had the 17th edition. I put this uh, this bossing gear cover over it to help protect it. Over the years, it's been in this this cover here <laughs> for over 20 years. It's almost given out, but it's still protecting it. And this is my go-to book. And in the go-to book, you do have your standard 30, 40, 50, 60 tapers listed out in here. The stand, you have the dimensions for the spindle, and you have dimensions for the holders, and many other. Here recently, since the Barzi Summer Bash, I was promised... Uh, an engineer's black book these have these have been in my possession to give out to recipients of the giveaway and a couple of them were given to me but I had extra boxes uh, because Bruce uh, Whitman is he's, he's even sent a couple to me and I had more boxes than I could you know had books so I gave my earlier engineers black books away Finally, I was just I just sent one of these here the last month, and uh, and of course I got a free edition. I got a, this was this was sent to me, just asking for me to go ahead and take a look through it and share that, and that's what I'm doing here. To really take a look at what's in in the black book um, was just to take their collection of tabs and and take the uh, glossary here and go through and I put the tabs in by doing that I got a good glance going through the book and you know what I realized was that all the simple things that I normally would grab this old machinist handbook and look at was in here uh, just last week I was doing a uh, a drive plate for an automatic uh, it was a combination forklift tractor and uh, the, the guy wanted me to make up new pressure plates and the eight hole cluster on the flywheel had to be indexed over in the mill because it was a big it was a big plate so it was easier to clamp it down claim the bore and the whole pattern here's a couple pictures of that now I normally would go to the machinist handbook and those that whole pattern is laid out in there as well and I grabbed the, the engineers book here and open it up and it has a very similar page to it with all the exact same information the thing is is here's a book that's that big that I use 
I bought this much information out of and here's a little book with all the information that I normally would go to on here I, I'm not saying I'm gonna throw that book away and I actually I still had actually when it come to uh, time for the tapers I already knew that that had those tapers in there because I've had to make other arbors or or collets or mandrel um, applications to fit in the R8 or an M2 or you know the different different categories of of machines have got different tooling and different holders for their spindles and uh, or Morse tapers so that information has always been in the machine's handbook but I did find it in here okay back to the hole pattern that eight hole pattern uh, reminded me of an old mentor and that mentor uh, would look at that eight hole pattern and he goes okay what two factors out of the A B C D um, would you couldn't you do that whole project on and uh, so it made you think about that okay and uh, you know C and D C and D gives you the distance out from the center and then each side so you could actually set up zero on your hole and then you could go forward and aft on the y-axis and you can go port and starboard on the x-axis and uh, you get to your hole and you can Z it um, so anyway that was the other day and I found that in here and then uh, just just yesterday I took a look at the tapers and and uh, the information in here and the only difference between the information that I saw in on the machinist handbook and what's in here on the engineers black book third edition was the taper on the machine's handbook actually calls it out to be three and a half inches per foot and in here it gives you seven degrees 24 minutes and so you you still you still got the information you need all right so anyway that's uh that's what i'm using here and i wanted to put in the share um on my second project that i've actually used that book all right last of my share here is um they say that this little uh, engineer's black book is available on Amazon, but I don't do Amazon because Amazon does not take PayPal. Um, go ahead and uh, you can you can Google um, engineer's uh, website. And then they have a little section there uh, where to buy and you click on that and they'll give you a list of it. And uh, I like Zorro and this is located at Zorro. Of course, when you click on Zorro, it'll take you to their site but punch in third edition and it'll take you to the current book the new edition all right um all right so let's uh let's go get started on our project here